Yo, gang, you give life a new meaning when you dream and it's your boy, dream, feel me? So before we start the video, go follow me and Cash on Instagram, Life is Saint, Cashman CEO, go shop up, it's all a dream.net, gang, I appreciate y'all, feel me? Hit that like button, drop some more stuff in the comments, and hit that subscribe button. So gang, we got the bloody war with South African gangsters, let's get it. Another gangster is laid to rest on the Cape Flats. According to the police, Ernie La Pepa Peters was a drug smuggler and gang leader who held the community in a grip of terror for years. He was gunned down in his BMW near his home in the township of Bell Hall. Alice is alright, it's gonna be alright. Family of Ernest Peters, Mama, you see it's alright. Protector of Ernest Peters, Muru Arm is alright. Peters was at least the 11th gang leader to be assassinated in the Western Cape since the Muslim organization People Against Gangsterism and Drugs, better known as PAGAD, started their war against drug dealers two and a half years ago. Feel me, rest in peace, rest in peace, gang, rest in peace. Gotta show my respects, man. First bullet, it's sucking, it's second bullet, and there's you're facing death with this car. I face death in the eye. And you know what goes through my mind? Because there's no one to help. There's no one you can call on. There's not a mom, a dad, a wife, a kid. You call on your creator, God. God help. Ivan Wilder is a former leader of the Ugly Americans gang. He went to prison at the age of... The Ugly American gang? Why they call him like that? Why they gotta be the Ugly American gang? Like Gang, why they, why they, why that's the name, gang? Evan Waldeck is a former leader of the Ugly Americans gang. He went to prison at the age of 14 for murder. After his release, he became a reborn Christian and is now working amongst his former gangster friends. I believe any person, the gangsters, are scared. Yes, they are scared. And that is what making them so most dangerous. Tell me a, a person who's not scared today. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Facts. When you scared, that means you're going to go out and hunt. Feel me? Because you worry. Feel me? All right. I got, I, got, I got that. I got that. I like how I you put that. Because I know where I'm going when I die. They not. Many gangsters are praying for protection I'm going against the relentless war that Tiger is waging against them. They have turned to God and claim they are no longer selling drugs. One is hard living's leader, Rashid Stafi whose brother Rashad was murdered by Pagod in 1996. I got a phone call from Rashid Stachy and he phoned me, said me, Ivan, I'm quite excited. I was in church this morning. And I say, oh, really? I say, yes. He told me that he had one of his brother's suits, Rasat, stuck his suit. He, he had it on and he was in Durban Christian Center. And this is what is driving the gang leaders into the arms of the preachers. Pagod. That's police? That was a police there? And this is what is driving the gang leaders into the arms of the Pagod oh, and, and its even more militant sister organization, Kibla. These Muslim-based vigilante groups declared war against drug lords and gang leaders in early 1996. Their protests were spawned by the police's failure to combat crime on the Cape Flats. They started marching on the homes of gang leaders and warned them that they would be executed unless they stopped their illegal activities. Police intelligence started monitoring Pagod in early 1996 and soon heard about a series of farms and shooting ranges where members of the organization's so-called G-Force or Gun Force received training for their military campaign against the gangsters. These niggas had camp just for, for the hood niggas?
That's tough. These niggas is going to war with the with the with the gang gang. That's tough. One of the police informants who had infiltrated Paget is a That's former tough. member of the 26 gang. He is also a Muslim and joined Paget at its inception. He is known in the underworld as Haji. They highly trained, good marksman. How do you know this? Because I've been in some of the places already. I've been on the farms where they used to train. And they do target practice. Target passing, moving targets. Moving targets is crazy. And in the sand, like, almost like a military gun. What kind of weapons do they have? Um, mostly nine more and shotgun. And a couple of rifles. Tell us about the shooting range. It's a big farm in Stranglund then. They make like dummies, but stuck his name on, and that's a shooting, that's your target. What other names do they shoot at? Stanfield, Jackie Lonke, Ahmad Thomas. So when they after these, these people, they, they, they just put their face on a target. I ain't gonna lie, that's tough. That's tough. Imagine every day you go on a camp and you see a person's face. That's all you're thinking about every day. Damn. You're thinking that kill him, kill him, kill him. Damn. The police, it seemed, largely ignored the warnings about the militancy within Pagan. During the last days of July 1996, Pagan issued a death list of gang leaders who must be killed. This video comes from the police archives. Wait, uh, now I'm kind of confused because uh, and I'm not trying to like you know be funny on any. I'm not. I'm really not trying to be funny on anything. But it kind of looks like damn. And I'm uh, I'm going I'm going definitely sound like I'm definitely gonna sound like an asshole. But this looks like the Indians, Muslims. You know, like they have like it don't really look like South Africa right now. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> So can y'all put me on 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 how does that how does that work? Can y'all put me on? If you do not give yourself up in the following week, we will put out our instructions and we will strike you for trying to destroy our children. The instruction to kill was that boy put on a hit. Boy put a hit out. Wait, what? That's tough. Can y'all please answer that question? Like, how does that work? Like, is is that is, damn? Is that part of the the colored? Is that part of the colored? No, I'm I'm wrong. I might be wrong. True. A few days later, on August fourth, nineteen ninety six, hundreds of Paget supporters gathered in a mosque in preparation for a march on the Salt River home of Rashid and Rashad Stahi. The police, although clearly warned about the intentions of Paget were ill-prepared and understaffed for the events that followed that night. Rashad Stahil arrived at his home to assist his brother, who was trapped inside by the packet gunman. Police allowed him to continue, and he drove into the arms of the frenzied mob. Did they, they dragged and they dragged boy out the car. Police allowed him to continue. Police allowed him to continue, and he drove into the arms of the frenzied mob. What followed was one of the most brutal murders in the history of the Cape Gangland. It was perpetrated by a mob of incited and murderous Paget supporters who that night 
killed in the name of Allah. Hey. Oh, Police say that they couldn't shit. resist the dying man as they were packaged snipers on the roofs of the surrounding houses. His charred body lay in the road for... You know how you stomp out the fire? That they, they, them niggas are stomping out his body. Oh, shit. I gotta go back. I gotta blur this shit out, though. Oh, my God. That shit was tough. That was tough. That was tough. That was tough. And he drove into the arms of the frenzied mob. Look at it looked like they helping him. Boy look like a firefighter actually. <laughs> what followed was one of the most brutal murders in the history of the Cape Gangland. It was perpetrated by a mob of incited and murderous faggot supporters who that night killed in the name of Allah. Police say that they couldn't assist the dying man as they were packaged snipers on the roofs of the surrounding houses. His charred body lay in the... I'm sorry I keep pausing, bro. The police couldn't even help because they knew it was snipers on the roof. Oh my God, that was crazy. We only seven minutes in. Boat for close to an hour before it could be retrieved. Boy kicked his head. Packaged members returned to the mosque after the murder. This shows what has happened tonight. Shows what happens when you put your trust in Allah. And yes, we can clear our society and rid our society. Yo, what do you have me watching right now? Of that scum. The death of Rashad Stahi started a vicious spiral of violence between Pagan, the gangsters, and the police. As they always, they innocent dead? people were trapped between the warring parties. We were astounded to discover the apparent extent and success of Paget's campaign and operation against the gangsters. This is a secret military intelligence report oh, compiled in August last year. According to military intelligence, 68 gangsters were targeted by Paget in a five-month period between March and July 1998. 24 gang leaders and gangsters were killed. Many more were assassinated after this period. The attacks against the gangsters, the report says, were carried out with military precision. The report mentions the names of gang leaders and gangsters who they say have been murdered, injured or wounded by Paget. The Paget, they are not there for anything else but to safeguard themselves and to take somebody out that they want to take. Kibla and some of its related organizations, and I think Pagat belongs to that, is driven by a very small group, I believe, of very intelligent, committed, but fundamentalist Muslim South Africans. If they go for... Oh, okay, so, oh, okay. I never knew that. Okay, okay, okay. So that's like a cult down there. That's a cult down there. What is it? What is it? Pega? That is a cult. That is a cult for sure. And they will kill you for sure. That's not an for sure. murder. It's murder. It's assassination. So you have this very small, yes, yes, it is militant, very intelligent, committed, passionate group. I said a cult. And I like that one better. That's a fucking army. I like that one better. It's for the right moment, for the right place. And then one or two will go for him. Make sure that they kill him. In March last year, gangsters Katie Ann Arinser and her husband Farid Davids died in a hail of shotgun and R5 rifle fire outside one of the Shabins on the Cape Flats. The murders carried all the hallmarks of yet another faggot attack. Katie Ann was one of the only female gang leaders on the Cape Flats. Women don't play a high profile, or you don't have a leadership role. Wait, if it's on YouTube already, do I have to blur it out? Because this is kind of graphic, I ain't gonna lie. I don't know if y'all seen the body just laying there, but... um. Y'all see this logo right here? Right? 
Where that logo at? Right here? I'm gonna use that logo to block this shit out. Cause I ain't trying to get in trouble. But damn. This shit is tough out here, man. In, 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 gang, um, in gangs. As a woman, she played quite a high, she had a, a big role to play within the structure of the film. She sat in on the meeting because it's just not anybody that walks into meetings such as that. She controlled quite a, a large area. Um, and she was married to quite a high profile. Her first husband was quite a high profile um, gang leader. Yes, there was one gangster that Packard wanted dead. It was the American's gang leader, Jackie Lonti. He had the dubious honor of introducing Pack into the Cape. Lonti's brother, Edmund, was the first to be gunned down in January last year. Jackie was interviewed just after the killing of his brother. These two kids on a bakke that was shot. There's a kid in the vein that was shot. There's a kid in the yard that was shot. There's a kid in the yard that was shot. And then that's so brutal that was shot. Damn, so they said it was a brutal shooting, feel me? Hold on, let me go back in a minute, man. Hold on, let's go back, let's go back. Because for the people, for the people that, that don't understand what he's saying, it's two children in a pickup, they were shot, and another in a mini bus. They took another child who was in my yard and brutally killed him. Ten months later, the once hey, untouchable man. Jackie Lonti met a similar fate when he was shot with an R5 rifle outside his home. The night before the killing, Pagan members were seen outside the residence. If you look at the investigation and if you look at the threats, the residence. If you look at the investigation and if you look at the threats against those people, the Jackie Lontis. Uh, then there's no, really no other way to look at it that from the angle of Baggett. They were definitely involved. A few days later, Belha gang leader Ernie La Pepa Peters was shot. Some said it was the sexy boys that ambushed him. Others lay the blame for his death at the door of Baggett. La Pepa spent a week in hospital before he eventually died. And uh, as the first and the second visit, he told me, I even I surrender all my wrong doings and things, and I, I turn to, to the Lord, to Jesus, I give my heart, and I ask him, Ernie, did you give your heart to Jesus? So he tell me, yes. So he said, I can't be able to give my word of my pastor, for I have a chance to give, I live my word of my life. As I'm clear, Pastor, I will have to say, Ma, I live to where I live. I got to go. If you repent and confess. Damn. God had that much faith in you, my boy. He gave you that second chance. He was like, my boy, you fucked this up. You ain't gonna ever move this neck again. Pause. You ain't gonna ever move this neck again, though. Just to forgive your sins. And I believe that Ernie is at home with our Heavenly Father. Despite all the, despite the drugs all he had the drugs, sold. Despite all the killings, if you are part of it. Ivan Waldeck and Alvin Martin conduct most of the gangster funerals on the Cape Flats. No, in the last two years, there are a lot of people who have been killed. Many of the men have been killed. They have been killed in all respects. And many of the men have been killed. Nieuwe conflicten wat hier onder elkaar bestaan. Daar is specifiek bij Satara. Toen daar zeer veel lijken. Als we het zeer weer de ogen beginnen, dan krijg je een Harlemstraat. Dan begint het met eerste lijken. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be translating. He said he buried over 200 goddamn people in the last year, gang. Feel me? Now he's breaking down the streets where, he, where, where, where things happen and stuff like that. But goddamn, 200? Just himself, that's how much he buried. Oh man. And as we do it, the three later on the grave angle, then we take two and then we go to pray. As net from the idea of the pagan and the gangster begin, it's not easy to stir up the mind.
Nigga said body started to power Every day I make around $10,000, and it's all online. It's actually not from real estate. If you're someone that's looking to get... The luckiest man to be alive must be Mitchell's plain gang leader, Dimes Madat. Paget had allegedly tried to kill him several times. In November last year, he stopped his car outside his shabin. Uh, gang, he said he was at the light, feel me? He looked at the mirror, and the gang members was behind him on his ass with the artillery. So he said, yo, mates, fam, go. Run for your lives, man. Run, 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 man. And the gang behind him, they started shooting. But the car was for him. He squatted after me, welcome, man. Oh my god, he don't have the um, he don't have a wrist, he don't have a wrist. Oh shit, I did not think that was coming again. That caught me up, God. He said he tried to run for cover. Next thing you know, he was on the floor. Shit, that shit was graphic as fuck. God damn. He's on the end. Um, I buy a blue top of him. With the R5? He was shot in that arm right there with an R5, and he was bleeding a lot. What's an R5, gang? Smart man. Smart man, so feel me for him not to die. He had to feel me. He had to play smart, so he had to play dead. Feel me? And he he caught them. He caught them. That's how he was laying, gang. Smart, feel me? He wanted to stay alive. Feel me? He had to do what he had to do. Okay, so they shot four people, one died. And we was in Anfalas. I know Payo and Adam. There's no limit to the hat. This was the third attack on my dad's life. But the group from home, that's all unexpected. You can do it back when I need it. You can do Java for three days in the Arkandiva and community. Let it that one in the Arkumala. Killing a person, silence a person, doesn't mean that you stop him. Because there's another seed you're going to rise up. There's another Colin Stanfield gonna rise up if they kill Colin. There's a lot of Assad stuckies out there. And there's foreign stuckies also coming aboard. It's not just the gangsters on the Cape Flats that are threatened by Paget. In Seapoint in Cape Town, we found Hansi Ace, who is the leader of the hard livings gang in the area. Hansi and his men... So, I know this was, it says back in 1999, so... What's the word now? Like, what's the word? Like, they they still out here moving like this a little bit. Like, what's the word again? Y'all got put me on. By the second floor of an old building in Main Street, in one of the city's trendiest suburbs, he says he's been threatened several times by like Paget. What? I is friendly in the com. Who's your mom? Huh? I got even my net skit and echo not smoking. I clone ya. I say two guys saw you in coma skit. You go cop there. Mm. All right, he's saying if bro pulls up on him, he gonna kill. Bro gonna kill him. So if, and and vice versa. Feel me? If he come close to bro, they gonna kill. So they they forced to keep guns. Okay, so 
plakats and not. In January last year, one of the hot. So he's saying they threaten him and all that, but he ain't running. He's staying right here. He's staying solid right here. And he ain't even want to really say their name like that. Feel me? He ain't even want. He ain't want to mention them. Officers of Rashid Stakhe in Seapoint was attacked by masked gunmen. Four people were shot dead and two wounded. Hansi came across the scene. As as my friend, and as 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 he came, then then I'm cool. Okay, hello, hello, hello. I look at those who are not. As young, all of us, because the old people are all of us young. Who come then? Who is all of us from? Who come? What can I do? Is it for the smoke or is it for the smoke or is it for the smoke or is it? Allah, as much as they are working, they don't come out in the past and rob the men from Greek cars and steal the people. Allah was not in the eyes. Okay, so. Feel me, his two friends died. Sorry, gang, I just gotta break it down. Feel me, because I do got American people that that do want to tap into. Feel me, so two of his friends passed away. Feel me, and, and bro asked them like, how did they die? He was like, I mean, why did they die? Because they were probably smuggling. They ain't robbed nobody. They ain't breaking no cars. That's the only thing I could think of. Like, they ain't do nothing wrong. So, damn. Several of the tape's most prominent drug lords and gang leaders have left the area out of fear for Pagan. Hard Living's leader Rashid Stafi now lives in Natal, while Colin Stansfield, leader of the firm, has moved to Johannesburg. Not only are the gangsters praying, but they claim that they don't smuggle anymore. And I'm not t telling the people they must believe me out there. Only time will tell. But yes, Rashid is not smuggling anymore. I just know it now. That's completely false, because if this same gangsters who well, five years ago used to sell drugs on the Cape Flats, and uh, suddenly they say that they stop selling drugs, then why is the drug trade still going on? Why are we still finding drugs every day on the Cape Flats? There's no way that they, that they can survive without the drugs and, and smoking. They, they, there's no way that they would stop it. Gangsters like Hansi Ace, who is an enthusiastic Mandrax user himself, Claims that Mandrax, what, what's that gang? Is that meth? When he and his gang of hard livings moved into Seapoint 10 years ago, they completely controlled the area. Maar hij smoog hier daar als hij keer kan, die mensen komen dan ook van borders af voor al. Hi gang, he was like, feel me? He was like, it's good money, a lot of money. I love the money, feel me? Now we can't even make no money, feel me? And he said he loved the game, feel me? He loved the hustle. There was no way to stop. It's too much money, feel me? People across the border, I need, I need to do this. I need to. It's nice money. We come allemaal net zo in te rekenen. While the traditional gangs and drug dealers remain the biggest smugglers on the Cape Flats and parts of Cape Town, a new breed of drug merchants have moved into the mother city. It is a well-known fact that the Nigerians, for example, bring cocaine uh, in, into, the, into the Western Cape, the Nigerian drug syndicates. And uh, our Cape Flat gangs then purchase uh, part of cocaine from them, all crack cocaine, to sell into the Cape Flats. Ik was gestikt van een Nigerian. Was dat waar? Hoe kom je dat je gestikt? En als het woorden was er nog niet uit, dan stikken ze met elkaar. Oké. Als het met elkaar gestikt. Ik ben er niet meer goed voor afgekomen. I hate it too. Alright, gang. He said he stabbed the Nigerian. They was going back and forth. He got one, I got one, feel me? But he think he got the better. He was the better man that day. Let me, let's see what the police is about to do for me. The police have been severely criticized for the incompetence in dealing with the drug lords, the gangsters, and Pagan. For years, the Stachis and Lontis of the Cape Flats acted without fear for prosecution. For them, gangsterism and drug dealing have become a way of life. Many say that Pagan cannot be blamed for taking the law into their own hands. For the past 10, 11 years, there has, there has never been a drug lord high-profile drug lord that was ever convicted of his um, behavior and misconduct in communities. 
But despite all the killings, the drug trade is alive and well and living. We don't believe that that is the route to take, to eliminate people, mm. because that hasn't stopped. That picture is tough. That picture is tough. That picture is tough. Gangsterism. To walk to the... To walk the road. I can't really see the rest. That picture is tough, gang. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. You know, I like art, for me? I be creating the art, for me? You see the logos, gang? I'm thinking. I like that, though. I don't believe I like that, that, that that's tough. tough to eliminate people because that hasn't stopped the drug trafficking. That's tough, gang. Uh, Let's talk about it real quick. What if we put three roads, though? Feel me? But I understand why they're saying it because the gang, you only have two lanes, the cemetery or the jail system. But, you know, I got to put the motivational behind it. So what if you got the three the three lanes, though? But you got the teddy bear, feel me? He looking like, all right, boom, with lane, feel me? I got to think of something. I see what I could draw up, gang. Nobody, like that, though. we've still got our gangs in our communities. The killing of gang leaders or other senior gang members have by no means stopped gangsterism or the drug trade. They've achieved absolutely nothing. Definitely not. They've just installed more fear in ordinary law-abiding citizens. That is what they have achieved. Why is she so mad? My, I ain't gonna lie. I, I feel her though. I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. She could have did better on the haircut, though. But I feel it, though. I feel it. In ordinary, law-abiding citizens, that is what they have achieved. The police have not had any successes against Paget. Last year, the Western Cape, there were more than 600 incidents of assassinations, killings, pipe bomb mm. explosions, attacks on police stations, and other acts of urban terrorism. It's disgusting and shame. That to date, there's been 682 um, pipe bombs, um, houses that were destroyed and things like that, and not one conviction. We don't really have the support of the government. And you'll find that on a scene like Jackie Lante, even like Benny Latigen, there were people on the scene, there were people that saw everything, but they, they don't want to, to get involved. There's great concern in the Cape Town area that even cases that end up in court somehow don't go any further than discharge at an early stage or docket is missing. And money. This is the two things. Money or niggas is scared. That's the only two things I could think of. Is somebody getting paid or, or somebody scared to die? Somebody getting blackballed. The Western Cape is gripped in a vice of terror. And it's not only the gangsters and drug dealers that are dying. Members of Pagod have also been killed, either by police or gangsters. Virtually every funeral started a new cycle of violence as leaders incited their followers and promised retaliation. In the day we are The police have also been in the firing line. A few days after this speech, Captain Benny Latakhan was gunned down. He was at the time investigating packet related acts of violence. On Friday, Superintendent Skalk Pasahi, former head of the Paget investigations team, was shot in similar fashion. Unlike Lata Khan, he miraculously survived the attack. The police in the Western Cape have launched Operation Good Hope in an effort to curb the wave of urban terrorism. In the meantime, the war between Paget and the gangsters continues. Unless something is done, the killings will not stop. <laughs> Alles is alright. It's gonna be alright. 
I ain't gonna lie. All right, gang. Like, all right, gang. That's the end of that one. But um, I don't know. You can't just tell people it's gonna be okay because they know it's not gonna be okay. Like, you just killed one of ours. Like, you heard what they said. It's gonna keep going back and forth. It's, it's a new cycle. Every new death. And, and, and the bad part about it is like the recruitment level starts so young. It starts when they're kids. Shit is sad, gang. So it's like, let me know if it stopped already. I'm, you know, I'm watching an old video, but like, let me know, gang. Hit that like button. Follow me and Cash on Instagram. Life is seen. Cash man, CEO. Um, drop some more stuff in the comments. Feel me. We gonna have to go somewhere else, gang. We gonna have to go somewhere else. Y'all gonna have to tap me in with something else, gang. Cause y'all putting all these, uh, I like it though. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I got like seven more to watch. And, uh, keep commenting more videos. Hit that subscribe button, gang. Get us to 10k. And you already know the vibes, gang. You give life a new meaning when you dreaming. It's your boy Dream. And we out of here.